it has a timeless feeling that no cities in contemporary China or even rural villages anymore have. So I went to the Great Wall of China, I was actually on a family holiday. I'd gone out with a group of people. We were actually going on to Tibet, so it was, a, it was a, a, quite an adventurous tour. One of the best times I went, I was traveling with a group of US senators. Usually it's teeming with tourists, but the government closed it for us. So we went to Badaling, which is one of the most popular areas. I was really excited. I'd always dreamed about it from when I was a child. Uh, it was decided that we would go some way further to a place called Simatai. It was a good three hour drive. We did wonder at the time why we'd made it difficult for ourselves. We saw the wall at Mutianyu. There is a cable car to get up onto it and there's also a kind of slide to get down on the other side which in true family holiday style um, I wasn't allowed to use, we had to just take the steps. The stretch of the wall there is one, one of the very well preserved ones. There were fewer people when we were there and the whole experience was I think much more magical as a result of that. And I think that having the time to really explore it on your own is, is what I enjoyed the most. It still has, has sort of a sense of magic. I felt like I was seeing ancient China. It has a timeless feeling that no cities in contemporary China or even rural villages anymore have. You can't really get a sense of the wall until you're actually up on it. It's, it's extraordinary to, to stand on the edge um, or even to stand on the bottom looking up and just see how sheer the drop is. And it is such an extraordinary construction that uh, my breath was taken away. I mean, it's like nothing else you, you can possibly imagine. And to think about why human beings would build something in such an awkward place. The sheer feat of building it must have been extraordinary. It was extraordinary. Um, countless, countless people um, died in the construction of that. And there are echoes of that when you're there. China as a country is just so different in, in every respect from what we know in the West and the wall is quite a good place to kind of start some journey of understanding of that. The Great Wall of China is something that's very easily combined uh, with a trip to China that takes in Beijing. If you're in Beijing for a few days, just kind of wait until you have a good day with visibility because of the pollution. Try not to be too fixated about in advance about which day you're going to go on because you may actually wake up and the visibility is not very good so it's, it's best if you can try and be flexible. I would recommend, unless time is incredibly limited, going further than battling and, and go to some of the more remote ones, you're more likely to have fewer people there. If you're active, I would definitely recommend hiking for quite a long time along the wall and bringing a picnic lunch. You can do a 10 kilometer hike from Jinshanling to Sumatai. And this, if you do that, you have got about three hours where you may not see any other human being. And this is great because being alone in modern China almost never happens.